and get started. So welcome to this program of the University of Arkansas Small Business and Technology and Development Center. We are so pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support small businesses. And please be advised that we will be recording the conversation for ASB TDC education purposes, but you will have access to these recordings um, and all of our past workshops and webinars at our website. And we are posting a link to that in the chat. I will introduce Edwin and he will introduce his team momentarily, but first I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson. I'm a specialty consultant with the Small Business Center and with me is my fellow consultant and facilitator, Chris Case. So if you don't know anything about the Small Business Development Center, I will tell you that it's a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are associated with the University of Arkansas and affiliated with the SBA and statewide ASB TDC. We are also connected to a national network of more than a thousand small business centers, which means anywhere you go, there's probably an SBDTC somewhere. Locally, we offer complimentary one-on-one -on -one consulting that includes business planning, market analysis, financial productions, and more, as well as programs like this one covering relevant topics for business owners. And if you are not already a client, we encourage you to visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu. After this presentation, you can find our other programs um, at our website, and we will be sending you the uh, copy of the presentation that Edwin has agreed to share. Um, so thank you for joining us. You get that as a bonus prize today. Um, Chris, can you tell us a little bit about how everything is going to work today? And we will get started. Okay, great. So today we're bringing you how to win with local e-commerce. Uh, we love this kind of format because it really allows us to answer any questions and talk with the experts about any um, information that you want, any situations that you're going through, um, questions that you have, even challenges. So this is an interactive workshop. We encourage you to ask questions as we go along, but we do ask that you do mute yourself. Um, unless you have a question, then you can unmute yourself and ask. We're going to be monitoring the chat um, really, really closely. Olivia is going to help us with that, so she'll try to answer those questions as we go along. So please ask any question anytime throughout this, this presentation, and we will make sure that we get that answered. Amy. Fantastic. Yes. So let's all welcome Edwin, Edwin Ortiz, Olivia Pledger, Pledger and Kate Lynn of Rejoicey. Edwin's going to tell you a little bit more about all of them momentarily. And while we're getting to know them, we also want to get to know you. So if you have joined us, please post in the chat and let us know what industry you're in and maybe what questions that you have come today why you're here and uh, why this is an interesting topic to you. So without further hesitation, Edwin, I'm going to turn it over to you and your team. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So hello, everyone. My name is Edwin Ortiz, and I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Rejoicey. Rejoicey is uh, a marketplace that makes it super easy for uh, local businesses to start a website and for the community to shop local online. So uh, previous to this, I have 11 years of experience in retail technology and supply chain in eight different countries, uh, including five years with uh, Walmart and merchandising, managing a $4.3 billion portfolio. Uh, and we also have some amazing team members here today. So we have Olivia Pledger, who represents our customer success team. And we have Caitlin, who represents uh, the SOL program, which uh, we can talk a little bit more about uh, in a little bit, but uh, I guess in um, in just a few points, the sell program is a way for you to get uh, a website paid for a year and then get all kinds of support videos uh, in a team that it's behind you just to uh, see you succeed. And it's a North of Arkansas uh, based program that's looking for, uh, for some uh, really good local uh, team. So if you feel like yeah, local businesses, so if you feel like that's you feel free to uh, contact Kate and there's gonna be some more information sent uh, around the program. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen and we'll get started. You'll see that. We sure do. Perfect. So um, we're gonna talk about how to win with local e-commerce. So why does that even matter, right? Well, there's one reason why that really matters, and it's not that. In fact, it is this. So the reason why that really matters is that uh, 
e-commerce was up almost 45% last year. Uh, and when you look at uh, overall retail sales, it was uh, close to flat. So e-commerce up 45%, local businesses, 20% of them closed permanently. And then the rest of them were down 30% in sales. So uh, local e-commerce is, local commerce in general is really hurting. So unless we're able to get or uh, local businesses to participate in e-commerce, we're just gonna keep seeing uh, local businesses close. And no one impacts more the community and uh, donates to the little leagues and does all this work than local businesses. So we need that in our community. So that's why this is so important and that's why we're so passionate about it. So uh, with that said, why do people even ship local? So uh, there was a study that was recently released by Intuit, which uh, is the creators of QuickBooks that uh, talks about how people wanna keep their money local. That is the main reason why they wanna shop local, but they really can connect with their community, uh, buy from their neighbors, because that's what local businesses are, uh, support local creators, have better services, but really there's a lot of friction between them uh, wanting to support local businesses and being able to do it in uh, just an easy way uh, online. So today we're gonna talk about uh, five tips on how to really win in local e-commerce. Uh, we'll give you uh, some examples. We'll talk about some stories. Really the, uh, the idea is we're gonna um, just give you some of the things that we've seen work and we would love to uh, hear from you, uh, answer any questions, feel free to stop me and, and ask a question as, as we present. So the five things that we've seen really work is uh, you have to build a website, you have to create content, collaborate, uh, make things you can ship, and then uh, last but not least, help the community. So let's dig into that. So build a website. Really building a website is your uh, entry ticket into e-commerce. People can't buy from you if you don't have a website uh, online. So having a website is uh, the very base and a website that's easy to shop, that you can manage, that's accurate, and that your customers will uh, be able to come back if, uh, if they wanna buy more, understand what you're selling. So building a website is key. And really it's just your way to tell the world like, hey, I'm here, you know, like, please uh, look at what I'm doing, like, you know, buy support, just have a website. It's, uh, it's super important. And there's a lot of options on building websites. So you have uh, Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, Magento, like there's, there's a ton more. Uh, here's here's just a few, um, and a lot of them are uh, fairly easy to use. Um, they they also have designers and things that you can hire uh, if you need help. Our very favorite is uh, Rejoicing, which happens to be uh, the one we support. So I'm going to show you how quickly it can be to uh, create a website. So you can um, get in and really start participating in e-commerce. It doesn't have to be scary, uh, and I'm going to create one real quick. So first thing is uh, we can actually create it through text. So I'm here, I'm texting hi, and then our Jersey shop creator is talking to me. So um, yeah, I wanna get started. My name is Edwin Ortiz and my email address is Edwin at Boom. And we're already halfway there. So you're halfway there to creating your site. So let's create a, a Joy Bake Shop. Uh, we're going to enter our shops, shop address here. Uh, Arkansas, see, there. And then we'll enter the category that we're selling and we're done. Like we just create a website, it sends the link, here's our site. And you can start uh, creating your items, you're creating your items is just as fast. So that's how fast, uh, you know, starting with a website and getting into e-commerce can be. So it doesn't have to be scary. Uh, again, there's there's other tools, but uh, this is just one one quick way to do it. Uh, so, but uh, it's- Edwin, I'm gonna just, I wanna <laughs> make sure that, um, so Rejoicey, that was Rejoicey. So- That was Rejoicey, yes. Get on Rejoicey, get on there and, and go and do those other things. So, you know, we've. We've got had a lot of programs in the past going over, you know, Shopify and WooCommerce and, and a lot of building. We actually have a, a program called um, 
um, uh, web 101 um, that another consultant has done. So um, definitely everybody visit uh, some of those. I'll go ahead and, and post that to see the recordings of those that go into some of those others in depth. Um, I'm really curious about um, if someone already has a website, yes, get a website. If you already have a website, can you also use Rejoicey? Is that um, something that you can can dual? It's not a one or the other kind of thing. Is that right? Yes, that's a great question. So, uh, yeah, you can use um, both. The idea of, of Rejoicey is uh, both to make it super easy for you to create a website. But like we said, uh, probably the biggest thing is to uh, connect you with a community. So we have the marketplace and the marketplace is just for your local uh, region where people can see other shops. But then it also enables like this collaboration between shops, which we'll talk about uh, in just a minute. So even if you have a website, being on the marketplace just brings more eyes to you from customers that are visiting other shops. And it gives you the opportunity to collaborate with, uh, with shops within the platform. So uh, it can be really beneficial, even if you, if you have one. But if you don't, it's that much more. Uh, okay. And it's super easy to use, super easy to manage. So, uh, and as you can see, uh, from the demo that, that we just showed, uh, you can do it through text. So you don't even need a computer. You can also go through your computer and it's uh, just as fast to set it up. Really accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Super accessible. Um, so once you have a site, so let's say you have a website, you're, uh, you know, you're on, on Rejoice, you're one of the many other uh, options. The next thing you want to do is you want to create content. So creating content can be anything from having a really good product description to having a blog post or having a YouTube channel, having a, an Instagram that you're updating with pictures. Really the idea is that you're connecting with your customers. You're showing them what you're doing. You're, um, you're creating a, a way for them to really interact with, with you and your, uh, your business uh, in a more personal way. Something that you can't really replicate uh, online that a local business has that you guys have is the, the ability to have that interaction with people. You know, as they come in to pick up their product, you can, you know, you can welcome them by their name. You can, you know, the, the baker's dozen, right? The, uh, all that, all those things that actually happen when you have the physical touch uh, are actually an advantage for you uh, when you couple them with e-commerce. So creating content that shows that, and then just as a way to document your process documenting how you're sourcing, how you're creating a product, how you uh, are doing something for your customers. All that uh, is, is something that people wanna see and that people wanna connect. So create content, really the key to that is we want people to say, you know what, I love that, sign me up, I wanna be part of it, I wanna shop from you. So that's the idea of creating content. So that's point number two, create content. And it doesn't have to be fancy, use your phone, um, you can, visitor, we have a YouTube channel, everything is recorded uh, from an iPhone. So it doesn't even have to be uh, like a professional camera or anything. Uh, just document, share with your, um, with your customers. So that's point number two. Point number three is collaborate. So this one is one of my favorite and is, I think a lot of times we think of our business as a silo and as something that we need to be scared of competing with others or like seeing everyone as a competition. But in reality, there's a lot more to win by collaborating, especially locally. Um, so that that's why we think, you know, third point, uh, super important is collaborate. Something that we um, recently uh, saw and were part of was uh, a collaboration between a company called The Little Candle of NWA and 211 Cafe based out of the Bentonville Library. So the little candle uh, was selling in farmer's markets during the, the winter and everything they, they weren't able to sell uh, through the farmer's market. So they didn't have a way to sell. So they, they joined the marketplace and they were able to work with 211 Cafe with pickup where their customers could come and order candles from them. And then they could pick them up at 211 Cafe inside the, the Benville Library. What happened there that was super interesting is every time people were buying a candle, they started also buying coffee. So now you had like this really cool interaction where they were both benefiting from, uh, from the collaboration and then they created a coffee scented candle 
And then, you know, like there's, there's been these really cool things. And now there's more shops doing the same thing uh, with 211 Cafe. And now there's, um, we have a similar thing happening in Springdale between uh, an apparel brand called Dos Locas and Bites and Balls. And then we have something similar with, um, with Rocking Baker and Fayetteville. As, you know, where now they serve as pickup locations for businesses that may not have a, a brick and mortar. And they also benefit from that uh, extra traffic and from, from the eyes that they're getting from other businesses. So collaboration is super important. Uh, it doesn't have to be complex. It could be, you know, as simple as, hey, let's uh, co-post on Instagram or let's, you know, can we have some of my items just in your store? Or let's do an event together. I mean, there's there's all these things that you can do just to collaborate with other businesses. So um, I think this one is, definitely one of my favorites and one that is uh, very underutilized in the community because we were fearful of um, what if the competition sees this or, you know, you're, we're so focused on our business, but really it's, it's a great way to grow and get more eyes uh, to your business and more customers. Edwin, I think that I know that with a lot of our clients that we saw a lot more collaboration, um, especially coming through the pandemic, it really was so obvious that we needed to support each other. And um, to expand on your example of Rock and Baker, um, they specifically all um, coordinate with Sweet Freedom uh, in Bentonville. And so, you know, Rock and Baker's in Fayetteville, Sweet Freedom is up in Bentonville. And so then you have this regional collaboration and they get to be in each other's um, spaces and working together. I know that I've um, done catering with them because they came together like bread and cheese, of course. Um, and I didn't have to go two places places to do that. So it's a really good example. And I do, I hope that everyone um, really embraces that collaboration idea, just because I think that the other part is because e-commerce is becoming so robust. Um, you know, we also have um, spaces that have um, kitchens um, that other, they're letting other people, other restaurants, other eateries use because they don't use it all the time or they have extra kitchen space. So regionally our brick and mortar um, idea has really kind of reduced because so much has gone online and e-commerce. And um, so I really would um, love that idea. And I did ask the question in the chat if anybody, if anybody already does that, or if you have other stories of companies that are doing that um, in the region because I think it's just, if it's, it's really brilliant or if you hear that happening nationally, I'm, and I am curious if you find, I know we're talking a lot about Northwest Arkansas, but what, when we are talking about local e-commerce, what are some of the national trends and what is happening in some other communities? I mean, I think it's, it's really interesting what, uh, what we're seeing across the, uh, the U.S. Those that have embraced e-commerce locally, uh, I mean, both have benefited uh, from the the increase in traffic from people just wanting to buy online, but I think they've also uh, benefited from the ability to reach more uh, more customers across the board and being able to collaborate with other places. So um, those is customer. I mean, this company out of LA that um, w was selling tacos, and uh, it was interesting because they they had a close their shop, but they had like all this extra meat. So they created like um, this taco uh, kits for people. And then there was like this other shop that had a bunch of toilet paper. And so they were like, okay, we're gonna offer toilet paper with your with your taco kit. So they were able to like get, you know, like those things uh, to, to work together. And I don't think they were even in the same town, you know, it was like, you know, probably the neighboring town but is this, this ways of really um, yeah, opening it up and just getting creative and, and really uh, embracing the, um, the collaboration, working with others that, um, you know, just brings success and helps you bounce ideas of others and test. So um, I think it's definitely beneficial, but this brings me to the next point, which funny enough, I don't think I have a slide for it, but it's super important and it's <laughs> create something you can ship. Right, so um, we we talked about uh, the the beginning, but it's um, when you're just selling locally, you only have the ability to to reach those that are showing, you know, through your shop at the time that you're open, that have you know the one is specifically what you want. So it really narrows down the 
the amount of people that you can sell to. But when you're online, like now they can shop 24 seven. And if you're able to sell something that can ship, then now you can reach people across the country or farther, right? <laughs> so uh, creating something that you can ship is, is key. And, and uh, we had this interesting conversation with, with one of the shops with uh, Snack Lab, which I'll, I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. But um, I mean, a lot of it, their stuff is food. They're like, okay, we can't ship food. But they found that uh, they actually have granola so they make this amazing granola and granola is something that they can ship. So they, I think, uh, you know, it may require some creativity to find things that you can uh, ship and offer um, online for people, but creating things that you can ship is, um, is another key to just being able to succeed in e-commerce. How much are tacos? Uh, tacos, tacos, and also tacos, 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 tacos. Good question there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that a question? Oh. I don't think okay, so. no worries. No worries. So uh, in fifth point, and this one is actually the most important. Uh, I talked about my favorite. This is actually the, the one that matters the most. And the one that is not only good for, um, for the people that you're helping and for the community, but it's actually really good for business. So during the pandemic, uh, as we were... Um, trying to figure out where to help and what to do with, with our business. Uh, we found a, a big need for uh, businesses to sell, but also for the community to find affordable ways to feed their family. Uh, you know, when a lot of them were out of work or they, you know, there was uh, all this uncertainty. So there was uh, a collaboration that happened between Tyson, Snack Lab and Luncher to create uh, family meals. So these family meals were like this, um, you know, kids were, uh, it could feed a family of four. Uh, they were $15. So, I mean, super affordable. And they were donating a dollar to, to the North Stars and Food Bank. So it was donating 10 meals to the North Stars and Food Bank for every meal that was sold. So uh, what was super interesting about that is uh, Snack Lab needed at that time, they, uh, you know, their sales had gone down. They had closed a location. Uh, Tyson had all this extra product uh, because restaurants had closed and they had no way to really, um, you know, really get out and, uh, and help the community. They were wanting to help the community. So even with larger uh, partners, like this is, this is so important. So we saw that collaboration between them, but then the impact that it had on the community. I mean, we're able to, to sell hundreds and hundreds of meals uh, donated more than 5,000 meals to the North of Sarkis Food Bank just in a month. So this was a, a month long pilot, um, but it was able to, to really help the community and they were able to increase their traffic. Like that's something that uh, Snack Lab was able to keep up and they're still offering family meals. And it's uh, it opened a whole new door for Tyson to see, okay, there's actually other things that we can do uh, when you know, restaurants were closed or when stalls were down. So um, helping the community is great for the community, but it's also great for your business. And we've seen this uh, over and over again. I mean, just uh, in smaller ways, like donating to the, uh, to the little league. And when people see that you care about them, they're more willing to uh, get behind you and be loyal customers, which in this time and age is, is really hard to find. And it's another advantage that we have in, in local commerce that you can replicate online. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna do a quick recap of the five points and then we're gonna open it up for questions and, and just uh, a discussion. So um, the, five, the five tips is build a website, uh, create content, make sure that people know who you are, uh, collaborate, get with other businesses, find ways to, to do things together, to get the word out, uh, to come up with better ideas, uh, make things you can ship. It'll allow you to, to have a broader reach and it'll also uh, just open new, new business channels for you. And then uh, last but not least, help the community. The community really cares about uh, local businesses. They wanna help. They just need it for, for the process to be easier. So make it easy for them and then make sure that they know that you care about them as much as you want them to care about you. 
So with that said, I will open it up for, for questions. I'll stop sharing my screen and then we can we can have a discussion. Great. Anybody have any questions that you want to ask? I think we've got three great experts on here that we can really pick their brains. We do. Feel free to just go ahead and unmute or you're welcome. If you want to uh, ask in the chat, you're welcome to do that as well. I'd I was going to say, maybe I'm muting. My chat is not working very well right now. So maybe <laughs> yeah. that's not working for anybody else. So unmute and ask. So Edwin, I um, just to kind of kick us off, I would love to go a little bit more into um, content. Olivia, I know that you mentioned, feel free to reuse content. I don't know that we really unpacked what content meant. Um, I know that we've got, you've got a couple of different content avenues, right? You've got um, website content and then you've got social media content and, and some of those things. So um, what are some recommendations that you have in order to um, be collaborative, really um, uh, say that you are local, really kind of capitalize on that because that's what we're talking about right here, right? Um, what kind of content do you think that um, people should really focus in on? I think that's a great question. And I'm, I'm also gonna, I'm interested in, in hearing what Kate and Olivia have to say on this one because they they really are the uh, the heads behind our content strategy for, for Rejoicey. But I think it starts with uh, have great product descriptions, like really tell people what your product is about, you know, what you're making more than your stories, like really what, what is that, uh, what is that about? And then um, I think another uh, easy one that, you know, keeps coming up, but it's really effective is uh, social media, right? Using uh, mm -hmm. channels and a lot of times it's not even the ones that you would expect. So Instagram and Facebook, we're on there, we really see the most um engagement on linkedin mm -hmm. so it depends on what business you have but i think just um you know it could be as simple as uh, a meme or mm -hmm. you know a, a picture of what you're making so let's say that yeah. you, you know you make hand crafts like you, can you take a picture of it and then you know say hey you know working on on a bracelet for a new customer like people really want to see that they want to feel like they're part of your process and it just makes it that more special, which is uh, one of the biggest benefits of local is the uniqueness of it. So as you show them how unique and, you know, handcrafted and, you know, your, uh, the story behind it, like they want to, they want to engage, they want to be part, more part of it. And they feel like, you know, they, uh, they're part of your brand. So Kate, Olivia, I, uh, do you, I don't know if you have any new thoughts there. Yeah. So as far as like social content goes, especially if you are um, still in like the early stages and you have like a smaller following, um, we've seen that it's been very beneficial to repost some of um, our older contents on social as we're gaining uh, more followers on our social accounts. This is new to them. Um, and then it, it just doesn't hurt to re-see this information. Um, another thing for social that I would recommend is straying away from, uh, oh gosh, the words, uh, I, I, I lost the word, but um, what is it? Stock photos. That's what I was saying. I mean, we have a beaut we live in a beautiful area. Um, depending on what your product or service is, I really recommend going out there and taking products uh, or taking pictures um, of our local spaces and using that um, as well on our social platforms. And then um, to go um, or to add on to what Edwin said about having great product descriptions and, and a great explanation of, of who you are. Um, like he mentioned at the beginning, my role is customer success. So some of the project that, or one of the projects that I was working on um, a month ago was customer discovery. And I'm a college student on campus. So I was asking some of my friends, you know, um, like if they would shop local and what keeps them from shopping local. And a friend of mine who is from an extremely small town in West Texas said, every single business in her town supports the local community in some way, shape or form. And if there were to be a new business in our area that didn't do that, I have no doubt in my mind that they would fail. And so I think that on your social accounts, on your uh, website, it is very important to communicate how you as a small business are also contributing to the co local community. And to, to go even further, um, through surveys, I, um, you know, gathered that a lot of people are 
the main reason that people want to support local um, is just to get that satisfaction um, that they receive when they give back to the community. So if they're buying products at a local store that also contributes to the community, that's just a double win. So if you're able to communicate that, I would highly, highly encourage you to do so. I can add um, to that a little bit. Another great thing to think about is repurposing your content. So um, we've taken some of our blog posts and um, repurposed it into social media post or a blog post into video content. Um, and I think that's another really good thing to think about as well. Well, and I think one of the things that you all are saying is really this is, um, it's really accessible um, and, and accessibility because I do think that as we saw businesses move into e-commerce, it just seemed really overwhelming, um, you know, but we have, you know, locally we have stories of like riffraff. So way back when, before, um, you know, social commerce was a thing, they were like, hey, we're just going to post everything on Facebook and sell it from here. And they've, you know, fine tuned that system, but social commerce didn't really exist before they did it, but they were like, here's this free platform. Let's get on there <laughs> and start and start posting and promoting from there. Um, and so because, um, you know, you did have a lot of those websites up there for, um, uh, for websites. And I think people get hung up on websites. Is that if, if that kind of makes sense? I think that it seems expensive. It seems overwhelming. It seems high tech. You get in there, you have to have plugins and blah, blah, blah. And, and it gets really overwhelming. So um, uh, I know that, you know, simplifying everything and, and just really, kind of uh, getting over the perfection paralysis and just do it <laughs> seems to be um, one of the things. And something that you mentioned, Olivia, um, that we hear a lot um, and talk a lot about with our clients is, is really bringing people into what you're doing and who you are and how you're doing it. Um, do you all have anything? So when it when it comes to, let's just use Rejoicey, you know, as a, as a platform um, as for more the e-commerce side of it. Um, what is it that, you know, from a website standpoint, what is that, you know, what is that high touch kind of thing? Because as a small business owner, you're one person. So capacity is really hard. So how do you, how do you stay high touch and like, um, and, and really intimate, but also have enough time to do everything? Do you all have any thoughts on that? couple of thoughts on on that one and uh, yeah I would, I would love to, to hear some of the your thoughts as well but one of them is uh, there's a lot of ways to automate things so for instance on our platform uh, there's a way where uh, I mean once you create your website your your, your items as someone uh, shops it'll send them a an email and a text saying hey thank you for shopping like you know this is your order here's your receipt uh, it sends them a reminder of when they need to pick up so like, hey, you know, you, you order for today at one, uh, don't forget to pick up your order. And all that is already automated. So you don't have to touch it. Uh, and we really were thinking about all that is like, how do we make it as simple and as easy to manage? Because let's be honest, like people don't want a website, like businesses don't want a website. They just want a way to reach their customers and sell uh, to their customers and make sure that, you know, people are enjoying the product. So. Um, we wanted to make it as simple as possible. Uh, and I think there's, there's other ways. I mean, to your point, like there's plugins, there's other ways, but I would say try to automate as much as you can uh, some of those uh, small touch points because it gives you time to then make sure that the, the product is packaged well, that, you know, your customer feels like that care at the, you know, the moment they pick up and all that stuff. So um, yeah, that, that's, that's one of my thoughts around that. Do you guys, would you like to add something? I think specifically when it comes to websites, the hardest thing is just starting. So um, you just have to, you know, push back, push past that fear um, because having something is better than nothing. And even with our own Rejoicey site, um, over the past six months, it's changed significantly. Um, so you can always change, you can always grow, but I think that it's really important to um, push out that, that first version of the website as soon as you can. And 
Um, like Edwin showed in his presentation, there are many different um, programs you can use to do that that um, offer different features, uh, you know, that, that provide you with what you need and what you're, what you're doing as a business. That's awesome. Do you have any specific questions? We can keep talking because I've got more questions for sure. But I'd love to hear from anybody. I'd love to know where everybody is on their um, e-commerce journey, um, local e-commerce journey. Um, you know, we get clients anywhere from haven't even started yet all the way to pivoting or reinventing or doing any number of other things. I've been in business for a long time, just trying to figure out what this whole local e-commerce thing is about. I think we've figured out a lot about it um, during this time. So please chime in at any point. I, was, I would say that's actually another, uh, another really good thing about e-commerce is that you don't necessarily need to have the product. So a lot of times we get hung up on okay, well, I need to make it. And if, then if I make it and it doesn't sell, but it's like, okay, do you have a picture of it? Oh yeah, you know, I made it for, okay. You can post a picture. You can see if someone's interested in it. If they are interested in it, then, you know, you can, you can sell it. You can let them know that, you know, it's going to be a few days. You can, I mean, but just being able to test and iterate quickly. I think that's something that e-commerce allows you that, you know, it's, it's hard to, to do in brick and mortar. So, um, yeah, I, I like that. And, and to your point, like now we we're at a, at a stage where we need to iterate a, a lot more often just to keep up with, with the customers and the needs and how things are changing. So um, yeah, that's, that's another good point for doing it. I'd love to hear about some delivery methods, um, all of you that you've seen. So we know that, um, especially the restaurant industry, you know, um, getting, you know, doing having pickup, curbside pickup. Um, but then we also had a lot of retail businesses that needed to ship things all of a sudden and, and some of those. So um, local pickup, um, uh, shipping, some of those things. What are some of the, the local trends that you're seeing when it comes to e-commerce and the ways that people have adapted um, and iterated and what, what seems to be one of my big questions I'm always going to ask is what's going to stay, what's going to stick around um, now that people are kind of used to it. Yeah. I think that that uh, pickup is actually one that is going to be hard to, to get people away from it. Mm -hmm. It's so much more convenient than, um, than going into the store, but then at the same time uh, it's still free. So people don't have to pay the, the extra, the extra fee on there. Uh, and then it, it gives you more flexibility of when you actually show up. So, I mean, Walmart has seen a 40% increase quarter over quarter on, on their pickup. And they, they had delivery from, you know, from the 90s. But it was really the, the ability to offer a convenient way for people to, to go and pick up um, at their own convenience. And now we saw that, you know, during the pandemic, we saw that transition to, to local businesses. And it's so much more convenient to just show up, have things, you know, come to your car, and then you can go on with your day. So I see that one uh, in, now it's referred as BOPIS, B-O-P-I-S. Okay. By online pay, yeah. By online yeah. pickup in store. So, uh, and the idea with, with that, yeah, just super easy. I think, um, I mean, shipping is not going away, but the pandemic actually showed that uh, we have a problem in the supply chain. Um, I mean, if you've ordered online, recently you probably it probably took longer than, than it has in in a long time and that's been I mean for over a year now so um I think people are realizing that you know you don't ne necessarily need it the next day but then being able to have the flexibility so I say pickup is, is here to stay I think uh and, and that's a benefit for local businesses because mm -hmm. you can offer pickup the same day and yeah. be much more convenient than others so yeah, supply chain really has come up as a, um, a very, which which also kind of moves people toward local because, you know, supply chain is effect, is affecting local to be able to get products in and to, to do the things that you're doing. But I also think that, like you're saying, 
people getting it from far away when they can get it local is um, is definitely one of the things. And I'll I'll post that we um, we do have some supply chain uh, workshops and things coming up. So um, if that if uh, Edwin's uh, mention of that hit a nerve, um, mm -hmm. we'll <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be addressing it here soon. Um, it's hitting a lot of nerves. It is. It mm -hmm. is. I think so I, another one, sorry, another one that I wanted to touch on on that and on the supply chain portion is uh, sustainability. It's going to keep increasing at, you know, as one of the, the main things that we need to focus on mm -hmm. in local is much more sustainable mm -hmm. than than buying, you know, online and getting it shipped. So both on the, the ability to, you know, if you're buying meat or produce or anything for, for local businesses, just to be able to to source locally but also for things that you want to think about. So things that are shipped from China or from India, the fact that they're already here makes the, the sustainability portion, the carbon footprint a lot smaller than if you, know, if you have to order it from a warehouse somewhere that will still have to be shipped you know, and just get to you. So as that increases the, um, again, the benefit of, of local, whether you, know, whether you make your own things or you're buying them from somewhere else, just having them here is going to be really important. Sounds like a really good content point too, like to really drive home that you, that you're local and and some of those things that um, that people want to know. Um, we do have a question in the chat, and I'm really excited about it because I was um, just thinking about it myself. Which is, um, Rejoicey and the fun Do you have a function that assists with local collaboration? that says that yeah they're asking uh, do you have a function that assists with local collaboration how does how does how do you all collaborate one get started mm -hmm. yes. oh that, that one is a, it's a great one do you guys want to answer it or i, I can with you okay no all right i'll, I'll go <laughs> you know uh so we do we have uh pickup locations so we have pickup locations in uh in bentonville uh springdale and fateville so businesses can can collaborate with those pickup locations and offer their product to be picked up there. So it's the Benton River Library, um, it is uh, Bites and Balls in Springdale, and then Rock and Baker. So you can you can actually shop from uh, many local businesses and just go pick it up there. So that's one way that we're we're generating collaboration. Uh, we have other thoughts like, you know, creating events for, for people that are uh, on our platform, for shops that are on our platform, um, having uh, like a Slack channel that allows all these businesses to talk together and just be, you know, uh, ideate, bring ideas to the table, bring concerns. So uh, in one place. So there's there's a few things that we're, we're doing. The one that uh, we've seen really succeed and, and we're pushing is the pickup locations. Um, for, for places that don't have, uh, for businesses that don't have a brick and mortar uh, to collaborate with those that do. Um, so. And can you also um, just, if you both have, um, if you both have brick and mortar locations that just kind of extends your reach as well, right? So yes. um, that, that's what I thought about with them. Um, like I can be in Bentonville and go to um, Sweet, Sweet Freedom, Freedom, Sweet Freedom and, but I can also get rock, my Rock and Baker bread there and, yep. and vice versa, which is awesome. And that's, that's really, really helpful. Um, that's great. I'd also just add um, the Rejoicing Marketplace, I think is another way that we um, promote uh, collaboration within businesses. Um, we see that, um, you know, each business that gets added to our marketplace is bringing their pool of customers and um, showing them um, and uh, the, the businesses that are available in NWA and on our platform. Um, and with that, you know, a lot of, a lot of small business owners know each other and, um, and, and th this is rejoicing is kind of like a community for them to connect. Um, and work together. So um, beyond the, the um, shared pickup locations, I think our marketplace um, is another really great way to promote uh, collaboration. 100%. Yeah, it kind of becomes a, you know, if I'm, if I'm here, I can kind of one-stop shop there and be like, oh, mm -hmm. look at all these businesses that I didn't even know, <laughs> that I didn't yeah. even know existed. That's awesome. Yeah, and to Olivia's point, so as you go into a shop, you can, you can see their items. And then at the bottom, you can see, hey, here are other shops that are nearby. And you get to, to discover. So there's like this exploration 
factor that happens as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Well, the other thing that is interesting to me is, um, you know, you have a lot of different, so one of the things about e-commerce and you touched on this a little bit about it is that um, we have this idea of e-commerce that's just retail or it's a stuff, it's stuff and things, but now we have, and, you know, obviously restaurants do, but e-commerce, we even have service clients um, that are um, needing to have e-commerce because they want to put, you know, something in their cart and walk away with it or contact you about it or any number of other things. So do you have... Have you seen that go up for um, services? One of the things I think about is um, even therapy. So therapy is a great example of something that went online. And, um, and I definitely would love to, you know, hear kind of if you have any suggestions for anybody that's in a, in a service, uh, service industry. Yeah, so we, we've seen uh, both. So we, we have some uh, customers that offer services. We've also seen uh, people that used to offer goods that now are offering events or, uh, you know, uh, to your point, uh, therapy is, is an interesting one. We, we don't have one on the platform, but there is a way that you could offer um, a way to schedule therapy and a way to have, you know, one-on-ones or, yeah. So there's, there's definitely uh, that factor and it it's almost like, yeah, that, that gap between goods and services is, is a lot smaller now. Mm-hmm. And you can uh, go from one to the other. Like if you sell uh, bikes, you can also uh, have a class where you show them how to fix, you know, their chain. And I mean, mm-hmm. uh, and vice versa, right? So we had Bites and Bowls recently did an event where they had people come over to their place and, and teach a class. And we had a bunch of people buy tickets. I mean, like it's so... Uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, an opportunity for services. And services is one that uh, when you think about the big ones, uh, you know, when you think about Amazon or Walmart, is one that is harder for them to replicate. It's like, how do you replicate a, a nail salon or therapy? Or I mean, like, so uh, there's an opportunity there to offer an e-commerce portion, but, you know, that ultimately brings them to you and, and creates that, uh, the physical um, relationship, so. Yeah. Love it. Well, we have a, a fresh startup um, coming up. I'm very excited about to see this, an interactive spice tea supplement and related goods, as well as a small cafe. Um, and that sounds amazing. A lot of things that they can um, promote there. Um, and I'm just curious when um, somebody comes to you with just a really, really fresh, not even open um, startup, um, kind of what are, what are some of the the first things that you recommend, um, cause you're kind of breaking into the market and you're also becoming part of a community. So, um, how can they one, get themselves out there Two, how do they start collaborating and, and being part of that early when it comes to local e-commerce? That is, that's a good question. I think, uh, when you're first, you know, first starting, we, we talk often about something called, um, building in public. So think about how can you get in front of people as soon as you start with your idea. Like it may just be an idea and you post it and you say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this with your, like with your friends. A lot of times we think, oh no, how am I going to sell to my friends or my family? No, like they're the perfect ones to, you know, start uh, with. So posting and saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Uh, If I do it, would you be interested in it? Or, you know, this are some of the options that I would offer. Uh, you know, would you buy it? And then, you know, with the name, like, hey, I have no idea what name to put. Like, this are my top three. What do you guys think? Like, just getting uh, people involved in the process, mm-hmm. it creates a community from the beginning, and then it gives you uh, time just to to don't feel that oh, you know, it's been six months and I'm still working on my website, like you know, this failing, like, no, you can, you can start with just your idea and you can start making progress just by getting feedback and iterating and coming up with, with new things that you can offer. So building in public would be uh, my, my suggestion for those that are just starting, get the word out there. Like nobody's going to copy your, your idea. uh, If, you know, if you have the, the effort and the energy to put behind it, like it's really hard for someone else to come and copy that, uh, that same thing. So, 
uh, be a lot less afraid about that and um, and just putting it out there and, and getting people excited about it from the beginning. That's fantastic. I, I feel like we're, we're flipping uh, business on its head, right? It used to be, you know, incubate, don't tell anybody about anything until it's perfect and then open up and be magnificent. And, and, and like you said, it used to be really siloed and just like competition everywhere. And, and now we're really, especially in the realm of local e-commerce um, saying just like incubate transparently, just like ask people questions. What do they want? What do they want to see? What do they want you to make? Um, and, and put yourself out there and then collaborate with other businesses that are, that are even like you or completely different than you are. So that's really, that's really cool. I want to make sure we have um, any other questions um, before we wrap up and get some final thoughts from uh, Edwin, Kate, and Olivia. Does anybody have a very specific questions to your business or why you came here or any number of other things? I want to make sure that we don't cut anybody short. Awesome. I don't well, see anything in the chat. Okay, well, I'd love to do a little go around. Um, Kate and Olivia, you both are, um, you know, going to stick around with Edwin um, for a little while longer. You're both students. Um, so I would love to hear from each of you um, kind of what you are most excited about when it comes to um, what local e-commerce is evolving into. And um, maybe just maybe something that you were surprised by or something that you learned. Either one. Um, I think to your to the point that you just made about how we're flipping businesses on its head, um, with the collaboration that we've seen through our platform, um, you know, that's something that I had never seen before. Um, I had, you know, I'm I'm getting new into like the business world and, and all I had really known was how competitive and intense um keep your ideas a secret. Um like trust no one almost, um, but we're seeing that that's not really the case. So that's something that um, was extremely surprising, but also very exciting for me um, as, you know, as I'm getting older and um, something that I'm really looking forward to see. I think that it could benefit a lot of small business owners um, and the community as well. That's awesome. Kate? Yeah, um, I'll kind of echo what Olivia said, um, I think that my perspective and view was almost completely transformed after working with Rejoicey, um, just from the competition only to like the whole point of Rejoicey and why I wanted to work with them was because they wanted to make a positive impact um, in the community. Uh, so that's been very refreshing. And I think a lot of local businesses want to have a positive impact. Um, oh. And then I'll, I'll also say that um, I'm just really excited about the Northwest Arkansas area too um, and how strong the shop local effect here is. So. Kate, before um, you go, I'd love to hear a little bit more about Cell NWA and I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, .org. I know that that's kind of your focus. And so um, what does that look like um, You know, in the next year or so? What are you hoping for with that? Yes, so um, the Walton Family Foundation gave grant money to Winrock International um, to do the Cell NWA pilot program. So it's almost like a three-part program. So part of it is getting online um, on the Rejoicey platform for a year for free, as well as mentorship and support and all, all kinds of great trainings from um, the Winrock team, as well as the Arkansas Women's Business team so um and it's all for free so i will drop my email in the chat that's um, fantastic i put a link to it um, for the assistance application do you have how many do you still have room you still have spaces open up yes good all right yes Yes. So that's fantastic. 150 businesses in order northwest arkansas is a lot so that's fantastic we're excited to hear that so Edwin, how about you? This is your brain, baby. Um, what do you <laughs> what do you see happening? What are you hopeful for? And, and what are you just hopeful for just for local e-commerce at large in the region? I am really hopeful about the the possibility of 
uh, getting getting the community to to see the value of local uh, local businesses, and then really uh, reducing the friction to support those. I think there's a ton of um, intent from customers to shop local, and there but there's still a ton of friction. So what we see overall is to uh, one make it as easy as possible for those that want to own a, a business to be able to open a shop. Uh, and create a business online for those that already have established business to get online, but then uh, to really uh, reduce the friction for the customer to go and shop from them to know their story to to connect with with that because we we believe that's going to make our community better. That's going to make uh, it's a much more sustainable way. So it's better for our world. Like it is, we see um, a lot of positives coming from that. And um, like that's the submission is really how do we how do we show that and how do we show the joy that it is to to shop local to you know to to really support your community. Absolutely, that's uh, awesome. Well, I want to thank you all again for being here. I'm going to post in in the chat all of the the links where I did post um, Rejoicey and um, and we also are letting you know that you can get in touch with us. I wanna thank you all again for being here. I wanna remind everybody that as an attendee of the conversation, you will be emailed a copy of this presentation and you can find the recording on our website as well as upcoming events and webinars and workshops. You'll also get a brief survey that will help us continue to serve you and bring your quality programs. Would you like to close us out, Chris? Sure would. So you can find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu. And you can also click or um, um, scan that QR code, not click it, but scan the QR code for more information and notifications to sign up. Um, so you can um, be, um, have more information about future listings. And you can also become a client. We would love to talk to you further about that. You can also follow us on all social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, we've got a lot of information out there for you guys to take a check um, to check out. So make sure you look at that too. But um, again, thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it. And, you know, Amy, like usual, you and I learn a lot <laughs> on these. So I really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.